Greetings, dear friends, and possible more than friends. I am Lord Belmont, Shores. Back again to expound my knowledge to the benefit of the great unwashed about the great undead. This week's feature is a little more risque than our normal fare. Uh, it's 1970s The Vampire Lovers. Which I'm told is a landmark of the lesbian vampire subgenre? Oh no. <laughs> is this gonna be that kind of movie? Uh, can we get a pride flag in here or something? Pride? Oh, uh, one should always take pride in their accomplishments. I being one of the world's leading monster hunters and maiden hunters. Nope. Uh, let's, uh, let's get to the drink part before we get canceled. I've seen a I know what you're thinking. Hey, Lord Belmont, Shores, why aren't you angry drunk yet? Well, let me tell you, it's not just because of the lovely ladies in the film. It's because finally, I didn't have to watch Van Helsing. <laughs> I have written in full of how my sister died, how I, the Baron Hartog, avenged her death. Now they say, the necessity is the mother of invention. Baron Hartog, he suffered a terrible tragedy. And what did he do? Did he call Van Helsing? No. He went and learned how to be a vampire hunter on his own. If he had YouTube, he'd have done it a lot faster. Maybe even by watching this show. And he learned how to do it and he got his revenge. And let me tell you something, heads rolled. Now Hartog did something that most vampire hunters would have completely glossed over. He found out that the burial shroud is very important to these vampires. But without the shroud in which it was interred to cloak its festering body, there could be no night of rest for any vampire. If you take the burial shroud away, they are not going to be able to return to their coffin. So he goes, steals the burial shroud, and then taunts her with it out of a window. She comes up there because she needs her blanket like Linus. Thankfully, he had his cross on because she almost got him. Used the mesmerism. Hey. He's only a man, he might fall for it. But she pressed up against the cross, got him out of his little funk, grabbed the hair, cut off the head. We are done. Heads rolled. In fact, that's one of the greatest things about this movie. Strong opening, you see somebody taking care of business right off the bat. Where do we go next? To the hottest club in town. That's right. We got guys and girls hitting up the dance floor. We got the DJs playing their music. Oh man, everybody's there. A dear friend of mine is dying. I am so very sorry. You will forgive me leaving you like this. Is there anything I can do? Well, I, oh, I hardly dare to ask you, but my daughter. They use a very interesting tactic here. Vampires will try anything, and I mean anything, to lure their victims into a false sense of security. I've never seen this one before. Literally, it's like, hey, can my daughter sleep over? My dear Countess. I assure you, it would be my pleasure to look after your daughter, if you so wish. Total stranger comes up to you, at a party, at a club, and is like, eh, I gotta bounce. Hey, uh, can my daughter go crash at your place for like three weeks? Sure, why not? What could possibly go wrong? My brother is dying, I cannot delay. My name is Morton. If I may be allowed to suggest, your niece. Carmila. Carmila would be more than welcome to stay with us while you continue your journey. The Contessa goes from town to town and makes up some family emergency, some reason why she has to drop her daughter off with a prominent family in that town. Over the next couple of weeks, 
She drains the daughter dry, kills a few of the townsfolk just for good measure, and then she leaves, moves on to the next town, wash, rinse, and repeat, does it all over again. It was there! It bit me! Look! It was my fault. Some vampires prefer the jugs, not the jugular. Troubles me, Doctor. The child seems to get weaker and weaker. Anemia! They don't eat, only think of their figures. Common with young girls, sir, I assure you. And a few old ones, too. Two learned doctors examine two blood-drained girls and nobody prescribes any cookies and orange juice? I mean, come on! Everybody knows cookies and orange juice for blood loss. Cookies and orange juice. Cookies and orange juice. Cookies and orange juice. You guys did go to medical school, right? If you happen to have a teenage daughter and she suddenly comes down with anemia or iron deficiency, let's take a look at the three causes. Vegetarianism, veganism, vampirism. Ah, all right, so with the daughter getting worse, our heroes converge on a poorly landscaped soundstage. I'm a fan, but some people like a, a well-funded greens department in their films. And in Wayne Manor, stately home of millionaire Bruce Wayne and his youthful ward, Dick Grayson. Carmilla, why do you always sit in the shade? I would urge you to pay close attention to your friend's musical tastes, all right? Stop it! Stop it! Nobody actually retches in pain over a song they don't like, even if you're a hipster. If your new friend can't stand to be around song or hymn, pay close attention. You could be in danger, because they're probably a vampire. I want to take a minute to go back to something that we always say, which is, don't trust the help. Now, we almost had a movie here where the help came through and did what they needed to do. First off, you had the tutor. She was the first one to fall. Then you had the butler, and the butler saw something, and he said something. He went to the bar. But not as beautiful as you, my love. <laughs> and as soon as he said vampire. It's more like a bloody vampire. That... Everybody lost it. They told him what was going on, and he took action. One, he called to make sure the dad came home, because he knew he wasn't going to be able to handle this on his own. Two, put a crucifix around the neck. Three, put the garlic flowers in the room. And that pissed everybody off. Garlic flowers, sir. They, um, they have an antiseptic scent. Will you kindly remember that I'm in charge of this house during Mr. Morton's absence? Certainly, ma'am, sir. He was afraid of losing his job because the tutor outranked him. She's like, get the garlic flowers out of the room. He's like, why don't you? She's like, because I don't want to. Well, I'm not going to do it if you don't do it. If somebody's pressuring you to take all the holy relics and the garlic flowers out of the room of the person you're trying to help, and you feel like you're going to lose your job. Lose your job. If you don't do it, delegate it to a vampire. Because they can't. Why don't you take them away, Namza? As we all knew was going to happen, he got seduced. I'm not a child. You are in some things, miss. What things? That dude totally didn't think he had a shot. And then he's like, really? Me? Didn't even hesitate. Like, not at all. That was, that was pretty cool. And as soon as he got a little... A little something something. And he's like, yeah, take all that stuff away. Yeah, we're gonna kill her. I'm fine with it. That's good. Don't trust the help. We got the doctor, right? Probably not a religious man anyway. Probably doesn't believe too much in vampires. But then he gets attacked by one. And what does he do? Last ditch effort. I mean, we're talking just a Hail Mary pass. Tries to draw a cross in the dirt. Okay, fine. I guess you're gonna die anyway. You might as well try something. But I'm so many things you could have done that would have been just as effective. Sure, you could have tried to, like, kick her in the groin. Could have tried to spit in her face. I don't know, would have been just as effective, which is not. And if you're a priest, can you bless your own spit? I bet you can. Yeah, that's why you don't want to mess with a priest if you're a vampire. That's why you should always carry extra relics. Crosses, crucifixes, holy water, garlic, big sword, guns filled with salt and garlic, something from the Pope. Something from a bishop. What am I missing? Hope you were paying attention because there's definitely some good vampire hunting takeaways from this movie. First one, having a cross as the hilt of your dagger or knife. I mean, think about it. it. Serves two purposes. One, stabbing. Two, repels vampires. 
I mean, it's the best shield there is. If you can repel them, they can't get to you, they can't bite you. Number two, listen to the locals. Can't say this enough, listen to the locals. They've lived there their whole lives. They know the little ins and outs and nuances of the local vampires. And of course, we already mentioned the death shroud. That's perfect, so that they can't go back in their coffin and rest. Hey, got your shroud. Don't trust the help. Despite her not having a long-term sustainable plan, Carmilla was a formidable opponent. Just look at this body count. Drain, drain, also drain, seduced, seduced, then drained, seduced, and suckled, seduced, suckled, and drained. So for an entertainment value, I think I'd probably give this one 22 stars. I think it would still be a classic even if it only had half of the babes, boobs, and beheadings that it does. As far as uh, practical information, I'd probably give it about five fangs. There's a lot of been there, done that type information. And I gotta say, I'm so happy, so happy that we got Baron Hartog and not Van Helsing. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and remember to protect your jugular and your jugs. Hey, got your shroud.